Hi everyone, it's Donnell McAdams again today for um, our 2 p.m. meeting. Actually, where I'm at, it's 5 p.m. and I know some of you are just getting up. So today I've got something a little different to show you. I'm going to show you how we quilt with templates to do a large quilt because many of you have been asking. And this is something that we have available, and I've got a picture here, but then I'm actually going to set it up so you can see how easy it is to work with. And so what I have is the weightless quilter. Now, you can see how it's set up here, and there are actually four of these legs, but you usually only need to use two of them. I actually have three set up today, but I could get by with just the two because I'm only using those three positions but this is one of the parts and i have to apologize mine can is a little bit discolored here because i actually use it and you can see that there are places here for what we call the tethers and it's these poles right here and i have those poles here beside me so i'll show you that so these are the poles and they are flexible. You can kind of see as I pull on them, they're flexible. So that's what's gonna allow us to easily move our quilt. Now we have two sizes of those poles and here in the front, I'm gonna use the shorter ones and in the back, I'll use the longer ones. Now this is set up for using a regular domestic machine in a normal position. You could have this on a sit down quilter where the machine was facing you out this way. And in that case, you may want to have these other legs attached so you could use all four of the positions for your poles to hold it in place. At the top of those poles is gonna go this clamp. And so you can see here, I have a clamp on the end of this. And I will tell you, sometimes these little orange pieces pop off and I may have a couple that they're popped off of, but they still work, it's not a problem. And you can see I've got two sizes and this is for the two different sizes of my poles. And so this is what will go on the tops of those when we put it together. Now, this is the bar that I did not use and I actually don't need that. And so what I would be doing is I'm either gonna be setting this together this way or I would be putting it in position this way. So I can go in either of these ends to put that together. And the only thing we have to use is a thumb screw. And so it's real simple to put this together and take it apart. And I'm gonna show you how it stores so you can see that it will just slide right under your bed. Now I'm kind of in an angle and so this is kind of, there we go, I got it started. You don't wanna strip those threads so I'm going to sit it down flat so that I can get that started and it'll go right in there and so I have those holes and I have these thumb screws there's no you know nut or bolt or anything else that goes with that and that's going to screw right down in there so I said that but I don't want to get it off so I'm going to move that back over because I think that was my yep there we go so now this will just go right down in there so I'm gonna be using this thumb screw on this other side down on the floor. So I'm gonna take that out for right now and set it over to the side. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go around to the back and show you some things and we'll get this set up so that we can load a quilt. But before I go to the back, I'm gonna put the poles in right here at the front beside me. And I'm gonna set That's at the bottom down there underneath my machine. And right here is that clamp. I use the short poles on that corner. And so this is the box that it comes in right here. You can see that it's not very big. And it's about four and a half feet long. So I'm gonna set it just out of the way here. And I'm gonna pull this up. So that I can put this last piece in. So I'm going to pull this up like so. And I'm going to take one of those thumb screws. I've already put the other end together. And 
And now I'm going to sit that back down on the floor. And Bev's helping me here today. So she's going to stick in a set of the poles. And then up at the top, I'm going to put this clamp. So we've got a quilt over here. It's actually already been quilted. But we just wanted to have the full effect so that we could see how this holds the weight of this quilter. And thus the reason we call it the weightless quilter. So we're going to take this up here. And... Put it in the clamp, like so. And I'm going to come around and I'm going to pull this one in underneath. Now you'll notice I've already got my machine all set up for free te template quilting. So I've got my glider on there. And I'm just going to be pulling this in. And on this corner beside me, I'm going to put that in the clamp. And so now you can see I can still do my free motion quilting. Now that back there is kind of far away from me. So what I could do, if you want to hand me the other, um, yes. So what I could do on that is instead of having it this position, I could have it in this position. So it's going to hold it out to the left or out to the right farther. So it would be like this rather than towards the back. So I would have that so those went out to the side. So if you look at it right now, the quilt has down in a valley there and it's far back. I could actually put it so it's spread out farther but it wouldn't be back as far. We do have a question from Peggy. She says she sees that you've got help today. Can one person set this up? Yes. One person can set this up easily. It's just that for the video, I thought it would be easier if you saw it so that it was, we just put it on there. So this is all, you would have your quilt basted in some way, whether you had a spray or whether you had hand basted it, pin basted it or whatever. Because now I can actually work in my squares. So if I was working on this square right here, you can see this is already quilted. It's been quilted on a long arm machine. But if I was working in this square, I can do my work. Then I could move over to do whatever I need to do next. And the nice thing about this is, is you just keep pulling this towards you and clamping and reclamping. So if I'm pulling this up this way, I'm going to hold this. You want to reclamp that corner. So I'm pulling it up about an extra foot and reclamping it. And so now I'm in this section. So you can see how it just goes back and forth and I can do my template quilting. And so it just makes it really easy to work with. So when someone asks, how do you do a large quilt? Well, this is the way you do it. You use a what's called the weightless quilter. And I know some people who use this, for example, even to do their stitching in the ditch with a walking foot because it's going to allow you to move very easily. So you would be, let's say we had our walking foot on and we were at this position right here. The walking foot's just going to take that and work its way back to whatever. You're going to stop with your needle down and you're going to be able to continue on rather than having to pull on the quilt and, and pull that weight because um, let's take the camera and show that back there how that's um, working side to side. So as I'm doing my movement here that I was showing you, it's just moving side to side so that that weight is not on your quilt. So it just makes it really easy to work on a project like this. Now, as we work our way towards us, and we were working on that end, if we didn't want to flip it around, we can actually put the shorter um, arms or um, tethers, the poles, whatever. Those poles then get shorter, and so I can pull this even closer to me. 
So you can start on one end and work to the other. You can start in the middle and work out. But this is going to be something that makes it so easy. And since we've had so many people asking about how this is going to work, we wanted to show you that, yes, it actually is something that we have. And So Steady sells these. And it's something that was actually, in the beginning, designed for embroidery on your large quilts. And so you could use this to embroider on your large quilts also because it's keeping the weight up off of your table there. And it just allows you to move it very, very easily. So we've got some questions that have come in. How, um, how big of a quilt will it hold? Um, you're going to be able to do up to a king size because on the king size, you're going to take those tethers. And I don't know if we can position this so you can see right there. But those tethers on this, on the right side here, as Bev's pointing out, could actually be clear out to the side. So right now they're together because this is just a twin size quilt, but those tethers could be far apart. What is the pricing of the weightless quilter? You know, that's a good question. Um, I want to say that it's, oh, I need to look it up real quick. Um, I want to say that they're like $3.99. That sounds, sounds like in the price range, depending on whether they're on a, a, a sale or not, but I think they're $3.99. And like I said, um, this is something that you can use for a lot of different things. I know some ladies use it when they're binding. So in other words, let's say this quilt was ready to bind and we had that binding ready to put on here. It's so much easier to put that binding on when the quilt's not hanging in your lap or hanging off of the back and you can actually just sew right around this and put that binding on there. Now, there is, a, there is a way that you can use this foot to do that. I would probably be using my regular foot with my feed teeth up, but we do have a, a sashley tool that you can actually apply the binding with this particular foot, with your ruler foot. All right, Susan would like to know, can it be moved closer to the table to lift the quilt off the table more? It seems like there is still some drag toward the back of the table. Um, I'm sure you could probably do that. Um, I, can, I can always move it one way or another, so I can pull this. Uh, right now, I've pulled it a good foot and a half closer to me, so I've got that right there. So it's really what you may see as drag is certainly not drag because I'm able to move this very, very So smoothly. to answer, Susan, it would just be moving the frame closer to you. Right, because right now the frame, I just moved it a, a foot and a half. So you can do whatever you want with that frame because it started out being right there. And so I've moved it about a foot and a half this direction. And these poles are kind of flexible. So you can see right now this pole is not straight. It's kind of bent a little bit. That's no problem. Okay, let me get this back in. I get the next question. Um, what is the minimum space required to use this? Because we've got a few ladies on here who said that their machine is up against a wall. How can they, can they still use that? It would be difficult up against a wall. You'd probably have to pull your machine out away from the wall because that sticks back behind there probably a good foot and a half. And that's because the poles are at an angle. Um, I'm sure you could use your poles in a different configuration, so maybe if you just pulled your machine out a little bit, but you do have to have it pulled away from the wall at least some. Peggy made a good observation. She said, it looks like this is a pretty heavy quilt, and I would agree, it's pretty heavy, but it looks like we're really not working too hard to move it. No, 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 no. It's, it doesn't even matter. This is a t-shirt quilt, and that does make it a heavy quilt, but because I've got my So Steady table here and my gliders on that table, as you can see, you can see my glider here, you would definitely want a glider because it just makes it move very easily. And like right now, this looks bunched up and it's because I pulled that up to show you. Now when I pull that back, if I was working in this block right here, it's really not bunched up at all. It's laying really flat. So Trish would like to know, what if you were binding and needed to change direction with a walking foot? I mean change direction of the quilt. 
Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. So what she's asking is if I was binding and I was down here in this corner and you need to change direction, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a mock of this. So I'm gonna put the foot down and I'm gonna put the needle down just to hold that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna let this corner loose and you're gonna let the other two corners loose back there and you're gonna trade the right side to the left side. So basically it's just rotating everything and so We're going to turn this like so and rotate that around and so now I would probably have that one hooked up to that pole and this one might be in the middle of this one because all we want to do is get the weight off of it and so now we would be able to come this direction and move that way. So I've got my needle down holding that in place because I don't want to sew on this but if I just took this out, let me just pull this needle out, it's not going to be a problem. Let's say I was stitching this way, I'm just moving that very easily across there and coming down in this direction. So yes, you can change directions on this, that's the beauty of it, because just like your quilt, this has corners to it, the apparatus has corners, and so you just do a reconfiguration of those corners. Okay, I do have a message, ladies. We are having some technical difficulties. It seems like on your end, it's giving feedback. We don't see that on our end, so I am sorry that it keeps repeating. Um, we'll try and fix that, but it doesn't look like it's on our end. Um, another question is, what is the minimum size quilt you can use with this? That's probably the better question. A throw is not going to really probably work on this because of the fact that the, the tethers are farther than that apart. So that's why I say when I do a quilt, I don't have any trouble up to like a 45 by 60 just doing it on my table. Because as you can see, you guys haven't um, ever really seen my whole table. I have a table here that's pretty wide. And so I can, I can do my quilt right pretty very easily on this table. So this is my surface here for my so steady table, which is the wish table. And then I've got a good probably 18 inches left on the back there that I can do that. So most everybody's going to be able to do up to a um, 45 by 60. But when you get up into the larger sizes, you can go to this particular apparatus. Gloria has a question. Does it have to be behind the machine or could you have it on the side? You could. So that could solve maybe the problem for those that have their machine up against a yes, wall maybe? That's a good idea. You could have it because it does not... This, this frame underneath here, this frame can be anywhere you want it. I know this table that's underneath there is like a four foot table. And actually, um, when I had this set up in the shop, so people could look at it and could sit down and see how easy it was to use. I had it set up on a Gidget cabinet that comes from the Arrow Company. And that cabinet um, wasn't probably much more than three to three and a half feet. The reason I liked it is because that table itself is very stable. It's very portable, but it's very stable. So it was a good one to set your machine on and um, you could then, if you, you could actually get an insert for it from Sew so Steady so you had that smoothness and then when you got your glider on there. Wilhelmina would like to know, does it fit a king size quilt? Yes, ma'am, it certainly will. And the reason for that is I'm gonna go around here and I'm gonna show you how we could configure that differently. So the cabinet, you don't have to really move anything. I'm going to pull it up to the table here. So again, these are just thumb screws. So this is kind of like a party, actually, when you're doing this, because you've got a lot of different options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one off. You've got a hold of that. And then I'm going to take this one off. 
and I'm going to turn it this way, and I'm going to put this one in this way, and leave the other one the other way. So this might be for a queen size quilt. And then if you had the king size, you would put the one that's opposite of mine, the one down there, we would actually take that and put it in the same position as this one. So you can see there are several options. So this then puts the poles going away from each other. Which is farther out. So that would accommodate the bigger quilts. Correct. So what I'm gonna do is show you how much different this makes it. And I know we couldn't go any bigger than the quilt we have with this configuration. We couldn't turn that one the other way. So we're coming back underneath there, Megan. Don't let it hit you. And we're taking these poles, and this time they're gonna go out this direction. And I'm gonna need to have, I don't know what happened to the, there it is right there, the top. So this is gonna be clear out here on the side. Now you're starting to see some of our toppers and things. I need that undone down there. She may have to set the phone down here a second. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now clamp this into this corner and we'll clamp it into that corner. We just can clamp it. So now we're back to the original direction and now you see how much wider that is so it can accommodate a bigger quilt. Now this is about as this is a twin size so I wouldn't want you can see that over there in the back on the right is already pulling in that direction and probably couldn't spread it out much of anything else but I can pull this in here and I can do my work real easily in this corner. I can do it up to here. I can go across here. And then what I would be doing is I would be starting to move some things to make it easier. So I would unclamp and reclamp and get it so it was easier. But I can go clear across this front doing that because I moved that one on the back left so it pointed out. So you can see now how that's wide in the back. So you can see how that's all spread out before it was kind of cupped down in the middle. So as I work on this, I'm gonna be pulling this forward and after a while, if I leave it in this configuration, I would probably just turn the whole thing back around. But I could put the shorter poles on that side and leave it so it was in the same direction. So there's many, many ways to set it up and it's not like there's a manual that says, okay, when you're in this size quilt, do this. You're going to find what works best for you. And it's really not hard to change. You saw how easy it was for me to go back there and change that one end. So definitely shoot us your questions. That's what we want. But I want you to realize that this is a way that you can use your templates inside of a large quilt and not be battling it or fighting it or having any problems. Maybe even if you're a free motioner, you may be interested in this without even thinking about the templates. But um, I wish I could quilt on this for you, but I wanted to use a heavy quilt that I already had put together. And this was what I had was a t-shirt quilt. And of course that's heavier than most. And that's what Susan was asking if she could, if we could actually do some quilting on it to see how it would work but this has already been quilted and I don't have a quilt that's laid out yet for um, with the batting and backing and everything to do that but trust me it works I've done it um, and it, it's not it's not difficult at all now 
I would not start somebody out if you said, hey, Donnell, I just joined you last week and I'm ready to do a full-size quilt. I think it's better to get the hang of your templates so you know what's going on with them before you start into something that is big like this. And it's not because of the weight. It's just more for the fact that you're not used to manipulating the templates. But I sure don't think it takes you forever. I had a lady that after two weeks... This was a lady in Michigan. I had taught her how to do this, and two weeks later she showed up at a show in Chicago and had two quilts to show me. So it just depends on, you know, what you're ready to dive into and, um, you know, how much you're practicing and that kind of thing. Do we have any other questions? Um... Stacy, if you're on, if you want to pipe in with the price, I'm not sure what the price was, and they were asking about that. Where can they get one? Um, so Study carries them, so what you would want to do is, as you all know, I'm a big promoter of the local quilt store, and you want to contact your local quilt store and let them know that if they have an account with so steady that they can get this drop ship to your house if you can't find someone local to you let me know and i'll get you fixed up because they do drop ship to your home and that makes it real easy you don't even have to uh, go to the, the stores to pick it up unless your store happens to have it in stock but you could have this at home and be working with it soon so I'd be glad to work with you on that so that you have one. And Stacy is checking on that price right now, so she'll get back to us. Okay. Um, looks like Carol's tried to find it on the Sew Study site. Hasn't been able to, so we'll make sure it's on there. It might be in the accessories, Carol. I'm not certain where it's at on there. Any other questions? Susan um, said, could you use this for both template and I'm thinking that's free motion quilting, I think is what she's asking. Can you do it for both? Absolutely. And remember, it was originally designed for to do embroidery inside of your quilt. So you can use it for that too. You can use it for stitching in the ditch. You can use it for applying your binding. A lot of different uses for this. And again, it's one of those things um, Stacy says the MSRP is 300 so that's even better than what I said. So that is going to be your uh, price for the uh, weightless quilter. It's very simple to, to disassemble. Um, when you're not using it, you're going to be able to put it right back in that box and slide it under a bed or in a closet someplace real easy. I keep mine um, in that box because obviously it's just easier to do to store and because it's so easy to take apart um, that doesn't make it difficult at all. I'm trying to find where my picture got to. A lot of you've said that it's kind of hard to find on the website. Stacy has just made sure that she's going to double check that to make sure it's easy to find. So we're on it. Thank you guys for letting us know. But this is the picture of the weightless quilter right here and showing you that you don't even have to put all four bars together. You can have it with just two bars. I usually put three because by the time I'm finished working on it, I've used all corners of it. Um, so that allows me to have the other one down here so that I've got all four, four corners attached there. But as you can see with the setup that we have right now, that we have made it so that the quilt is pretty well spread out. This is um, a queen, uh, uh, excuse me, a twin size. And so because we put the bars, the tethers out on that side to the angle to the left and left this one going straight back, it's pretty well flat there in the center. And of course you can re, uh, you know, re uh, attach those clamps in different positions so that you can work this through the system so to speak so that you can still um, reach the areas that you're trying to reach 
Megan actually does t-shirt quilts for graduations and things, and this is one that um, she has done that is ready to have the binding on it. And you probably don't want to keep this up, especially if you've got cats, because like Vonnie said, it makes a great cat hammock. Oh yeah. So you probably don't want to do, keep that up. Yeah, you probably want to make sure that you do something to, to keep the, the little friendly sewing room cats away. Peggy likes the idea of storing it. That's a great idea. Yeah, it's very easy to store in that box. It's very simple, um, not hard at all. And like I said, you don't have to have a big table if you're wanting to set something up that you can actually just leave set up. I know that that Gidget table from Arrow was a great find for me um, to make it so it was an easy small table that was also a portable table. When we take this to shows, we actually take that Gidget table and we set this quilt up on that and people we have a piece of uh, fabric and batting in there so that people can actually sit down and try it um, and that's just a total sample so it's it's not like it's a quilt like this that's in there lillian would like to know that when you're using your rulers on the quilt as you go is the technique the same using the system oh yeah so if i was doing this and we didn't have anything right here i would take my crosshair grid I would find where I wanted it to be I would do my markings just like I normally did and that's the beauty of having this extra space on this table so that's why I like having this larger table and so once I've done that I would take my template I would bring it into here and I would do my designs the same exact way as I did before so you can see how easy this is to move I'm going to go ahead and just set the foot down so you can see that, whoa, I haven't even got it set up, so hang on. There we go. So that when I set that foot down, now I can move that. It's set up for ruler work. My feed teeth are down, and I'm able to move what I need to move. Maude wants to know if this video will be available for replay. So Yes, it'll be available for replay after we're finished. Um, I, I just wanted you guys, because I know how many people have asked, you know, what do we do about larger projects? You know, is everything quilt as you go? And then I'm only using small pieces, then I have to put them together. No, no, no. You can take those quilts that you've worked on. Maybe it's something that you've had um, for three or four years or maybe even longer, because I have one that's about to celebrate 40 years in the box. But anyway, let's not go to that. For those of you, I will say something about that because this is funny. Some of you remember back when J.C. Penney sold fabric. That quilt that I'm talking about, that fabric came from J.C. Penney's. So it was, it is, it is celebrating some anniversaries, let's just say that. But you can do any of those blocks that you have put together for a block of the month quilt or, you know, whatever. So it's going to be something that is... Like, you're gonna wonder how in the world you ever got along without something like this. And so, um, if you've been doing free motion quilting but you've never had something like this, it's time you get something to make your life a whole lot easier. So Lillian wants to know, can you use this with a serger or an overclock? Overlock? Yeah, overlock, sorry. Well, I suppose you could. I'm not sure what you're gonna be doing with a serger or an overlock on this. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure you could. The only thing is, is in an overlock, you only have about that much space. So I'm not sure what you're going to do with all of this. Oh, she's just thinking of making curtains on a serger. Oh, Maybe okay. Making it long. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure you could adapt it in some way. What about our friends from Australia? Do, is this product in Australia as well? We've had a lot of them ask about that. Stacy, if you're still on, there's your question. Can they get this in Australia? Do you need to do anything special with the seams, Bonnie's asking. Okay, that is a great question, Bonnie. And if you've not been on, you might wanna go and watch my Let's Get Started. But what you wanna do when you're piecing from now going forward, you're gonna to want to use a 60 or an 80 weight thread. And that will allow these seams to lay flatter You'll notice that I'm not having any trouble going from one side to the other here. Everything is fine this way. But if you have 
from going forward, if you piece with a 60 or 80 weight thread, it's going to make it a whole lot easier to go over those seams. This is one of the 60 weights that I use, and it is, comes from um, uh, Quilter Select, which is Alex Anderson's um, brand. This is Perfect Cotton Plus. It's a 60 weight, and then there is also obviously an 80 weight. For right now, what you can do is for these seams, if you're having issues, you can steam these, obviously not on your table, but you can steam these and then put them on a, a very rigid surface and then put the seam roller over them. So this is something that I have available on my website and what it does because of the way it's ergonomically made, you can see these ridges, they're not just for cutesy, it's because when you hold it, you get pressure, much more pressure this way. And so when that's steamed and you press this, they'll lay a lot flatter so you can go ahead and get across those seams. But I will tell you that good pressing is always important. But if you would piece with that 60 weight or 80 weight, I actually prefer the 60 weights. If you piece with those threads, it will make these seams lay so much flatter and allow you to get over them more easily. Is there a video out there showing actual sewing using this weightless quilter? Yes, you can go and just Google weightless quilter and there will be videos out there. I don't believe there's one using templates at this point, but I know there's one with a walking foot and I think one with doing binding. It looks like we might have Amanda put on there who you would contact if you were in Australia. So thanks Amanda for that. Um, Stacy's looking on a shipping quote for that. Okay. Um, we're still looking for, somehow we're still having trouble finding the Sew Steady, um, the weightless quilter on the site. Keep looking, we're working on it. I'm sure that Stacy will make that so it's very easy to find here just because of the fact that um, uh, you've brought it to our attention. She'll make it so it's easy to find. Um, the weightless quilter, I, I can't say enough about it. If you're wanting to do larger quilts, you're gonna find that it is gonna be a godsend for you. So it just makes it so much easier. Any other questions? The other thing you need to remember when you're piecing, you don't have to have a whole lot of colors of thread. When I get my piecing threads, I basically have black, gray, cream, and white, and then a tan color. And those five colors get me through about anything that I'm piecing because obviously you don't have to match every single thread when you're doing that. Stacy has just put on the link for the weightless quilter. So those of you who are looking, she's added the link. Thank you. I'll give this to you so you can. So it looks like there can be a quote for the shipping cost because we know the size of the box and all of that. So that quote can be there. Keep sending us your questions. So those of you that don't have a local quilt shop that carries these, just get in contact with me and I'll get you fixed up. Most of you know that I have put up a new um, site specific for this. So if you go to All Things Quilting and Sewing with Donnell McAdams, we found out last night that link wasn't working that easily, but we've got it fixed for today. Um, I'm going to be doing some videos on there. In fact, I promised you guys one on mask making and I plan to do that tonight. And we'll have that on there so you can see how easy it is to make the mask. 
because as I mentioned the other day, I really wasn't planning to get into the mask making, but because um, it looks like it's gonna be with us for a while, we're all gonna need to have a kind of a wardrobe of some masks for our options. And so I wanna show you one that literally you can make in about 10 to 12 minutes depending on your sewing skills. And it's, an, it's one that's very comfortable to wear when you have glasses. So that's the one I'm gonna be showing you. And I've got some other things I wanna sh you know, share with you on that site. So I'd love to have you join me um, on that particular uh, site so that we can kind of keep things, of, keep things flowing. And some of that's not related to quilting, so that's why I'm not doing it on here. So, um... Linda asked a great question. Can you buy separate pieces, like if you just needed a connecting bar or just needed one of these hooks? I don't believe so. I don't think so. Um, and I had one more about thread. I've lost it. Just a moment. Oh, here it is. Is your 60-weight cotton used in the bobbin as well? Yes. Yes, I use it top and bobbin. You can use a different weight in the bobbin if you want. Um, in fact, um, you can get these with the already pre-wound bobbins, but I usually just use this same thread. Um, it's, it's a reasonably priced thread, and I really like the quality of it, and Alex Anderson does do a good job of getting her products so that they're top quality, so I've liked it really well. So it looks like for our Australia friends, you can either go to Judy Hall. She's on here right now. She says she's the one that you need to probably go to for any of your weightless quilter needs there. One more thing while we're talking about this, um, my um, basting spray. I wanna show you that because I don't think I've ever shown the basting spray. This is the one that I'm really liking a lot, and this is Quilt Basting Spray. Not an exciting name, but it's the one by June Taylor, and it is what you're going to do if you want to spray. And as always, I recommend outside if you can. Um, I wear a mask even when I'm outside. I don't want this, um, you know, bringing any of those whatever's in it to hold your quilt together into my lungs. And then I've also talked about the starch savvy. Starch savvy is what I use to press out um, creases that are in my fabric, but it's also what I spray on my fabric to allow me to use the Frixon markers. So I spray this and press it, spray it and press it again. And these are June Taylor project products. Um, and again, I have those available myself, and I'm sure they're going to be available in a lot of other places because I've been showing them a lot. And so this is fragrance and flake free. It's not going to cause any um, flaking on your iron or on your fabric. So, oh, could you, Kathy asked, could you use Best Press also? Best Press works the same, yes, is the starch savvy. for keep The Best Press works the same um, for um, application to make a barrier so that your marking pens will come off of your fabric. And that is the Frixon pens. I don't know about anything else. Any other questions for us? I really wish this was a quilt that I had ready to quilt because now that I got it all set up, I'd really like to be quilting instead of just having this to flow back and forth. But even look at this, as you've got a border right here, you could easily do a border design, a feather or something like that right in this area because I've moved that clear from the top to the bottom very easily. That thread that you were using, um, is it called DQ? QS, it's Sorry, Quilter QS. Select. Do you Perfect uh, Cotton Plus. We have Sandy who's looking at where she can find that. Well, again, I would ask at your cloak, local quilt store. A lot of them have it. But if not, get in contact with me. I'll get you set up. Carol got her fricks on markers today. She's excited. Good. Keep sending us your questions.
Well, if we don't have any more questions, I hope we have inspired you to think about getting out those block of the month quilts that you have or maybe even some that you have put together and thought, oh, I'm never going to get back to that. This would be a good place to start. Um, give it some practice. I think you're going to find that it is really, really easy to work with. Um, you may want to lay your quilt out and do a little planning as to what you're going to do because remember, with working like this, this one happens to have borders here and here, but then it changes. It doesn't have a cornerstone, and it goes a different way because this is um, one of those t-shirt quilts that is put together to make sure that we feature the actual t-shirt, not just to fit it into a certain size block. Which is actually what Joan was asking. Where would you start? What's a good starting point on a quilt like this? Perfect question. So, in the sense of this, when you've got it all basted together and you know it's going to hold, which I have honestly not had a problem with that basting spray, but depending on how you're putting yours together, I would recommend you start in the middle and work your way out around that. But that does not mean that you have to start in the middle and then just keep growing it out like this. You can start in the middle and work your way to the right and then work your way to the left and then move down to the middle of the next area and do the same thing. And this is the beauty of working on borders with something like this, because if it is easiest to do the border you're, you're making from right to left, this would work fine. But you might have one that's easier to do so that it's from top to bottom. And if that was the case, then you may want to put this in here in a little different direction. So you can do whatever works for you, and remember the configuration is pretty endless with the weightless quilter because of the way those pieces that are on the end, you want to hand me that over there, Megan? The way these pieces are on the end, if you have it like this, this is going to make it go wider because your tethers are coming out this direction. But if you have it on there so that it's like this, then these are going to go farther to the back. So it's just however you put it together, you could even put it together like this. So they're coming at you. So that would work for a smaller quilt. So if you were going to put on there a smaller quilt, these tethers are going to come towards you and that's going to make it even easier. So you might be able to do that throw quilt. I hadn't thought about putting this piece on in that direction. So Betty asked a question. If you spray your fabric with spray, during block quilt construction, does that last through marking with the Frixon markers for quilting, or do you need to spray again? So you're talking about putting it on there with the best press or the, the starch savvy, and yes, that will stay on there. Now, the more you iron it or press it, the more it's going to come off, but if you've only done that to, you know, get your wrinkles out and everything, and now you're ready to do your marking. If you did that twice before, it will still be on there. So it, it makes it so it's very easy to work with because you would have done this block, I'm assuming, and then you put it together. And so you should have no problems with that. So Laura asks, is there a planning video to help with choosing which design or ruler to use for something like this? Mm, no, not really. Um, that again is one of those things that as we get more into it and get more people doing the large like this, that's probably going to come around. I know Stacy was working on something last fall and that may be something that actually comes to fruition so that we have something that allows you to plan your uh, quilt. So Kathy would like to know your thoughts on glide thread. I like glide thread. There's no problem with glide thread. Um, I'm not sure what weight that is, um, so I'm not sure that that's one that you would maybe necessarily want to use for construction, um, but that's just because I don't know for certain. I've used it many times on the top of the quilt, but I don't know that I've ever used it for construction. Remember when you're working, like for example in this case, this has got a lot of leftover out here on the edge. But if you didn't have anything to set your template on, so the template was, let me just get one so you can see it here. Let 
And those of you that have heard me mention, we're doing that live on Saturday with um, Janome. So I have my Janome templates, you know, pretty easily here. But if I was doing something for some reason and these edges, the, the, spe the stable tape is off the edge, I'm not gonna have a problem on this fabric because I got my extra out here. But if for some reason you'd already cut that up there, you're gonna need to have a little piece of extra fabric that you're gonna put, I've kind of lost mine now, but you're just gonna have an extra piece of fabric that you lay there. Pretend this isn't here this is just my extra piece. And so now when I have my template, I can still work everything because you don't want these, especially when you're working on something big, you don't want your stable tape grabbing onto your glider. So that's something to you know remember if you haven't heard me say, I like to have a piece that's about three inches wide. So you know if I was working like this and doing a straight line or whatever, I still have it so it's going to glide real easy. And trust me, I'm hardly moving this. I call this fairy fingers because so many people put too much pressure on this and it's hard to move. So Peggy asked a question. She's not sure if it's on topic, but I think it is. Do you always quilt around appliques? Some people quilt through them. I like to quilt around them. Because if it's, you've done the work to applique it on there, I'm not sure why you would want to um, put quilting through it. So that would go good with what I did the other day regarding maybe even some of the mini templates. Um, you don't have to use the mini templates. You can use you know other sizes of templates. Um, I'm actually working on a set right now that looks like it may be coming out in the fall that are called background fills that are gonna make it real easy to work around those appliques. And so I'm pretty excited about those. And that would be something that, let's say this right here, let's go over to this instead of having this as a, this is a Green Bay Pack, no it's not. Oh yes it is, this is a Green Bay Packers. And let's say that that wasn't, and that was just an applique, and you wanted to fill this background, it's going to be one that's going to be easy to fill in the background even after this has been applique on there. Or one of the, my ideas is that you can actually make the area where you're going to applique on and then do your background fill but leave out that area. So a lot of different ways that we can do this. Joanne's got a question. Do you put a Teflon sheet of on the bed of the machine so the fabric glides? And if so, what kind? Well, we have, with So Steady, we have what's called a grid glider. And this is the grid glider. It actually clings to my surface of my sewing machine and my table. And so that's what makes this all so easy to move. So yes, we do, and the So Steady grid glider works great. I do want to take one more opportunity to invite you to join us on the um, Janome party that we're having. It's probably going to be one of the biggest parties ever. It's on Saturday. Um, we're going to be doing a project and using Janome templates. This is the project. If you don't have this particular template, all you would need would be your circle template from your sampler set. This particular template up here, you could actually use your arc, your 12 inch arc template. So even if you don't have the Janome templates, you're gonna be able to do this project with us. And um, that class is gonna be at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And you just need to go on and get signed up so that they'll uh, have, so you'll be on the right page. It's not on the Janome sewing page, it's on a separate page that they have. I'm gonna put it in the comments right now. Okay, she's putting a link to it in the comments. I'm really looking forward to this class. Um, it's gonna have a little bit of uh, everything regarding how to get started, but we're gonna dive right into using the templates. And the thing with it that's so nice is you don't have to sew with me. The, it will be archived on there and you can go back and you can actually watch it later. 
so that you would be able to sew along and stop and sew along and stop. I absolutely love the technology that we have nowadays. You don't have to um, have a great technological mind to follow this stuff. You can just put your little um, phone right beside or your iPad right beside. And if you didn't know it, so Steady actually has an iPad and an iPhone holder that looks like a little reclining, um, oh, I don't know what you want, kind of a hammock that will actually hold that so that um, it just sits right beside your sewing machine or wherever you happen to be working. So that's a, a nice little thing that you can get to hold that. Do we know, two questions, is there a handout for that class and how long do we expect that class to last? It'll be a two hour class. There will be a handout that will be put up like pretty close before that. Right now there is a link to what you need. You can also get a kit and that would be available on my website and obviously you're probably not gonna get it in time for Saturday but you would have it be before um, next Wednesday or so. So if you were just watching, you'd still be able to get it that has everything in it. And um, if not, you can uh, just get two fat quarters and a little scrap for the little uh, trim piece and you'd be ready to go. But that information is on the site once you get signed up. What about grid gliders? Do they come in smaller sizes? Yes, there is a smaller size to the grid glider. Um, I want to say that this one is, Stacy, if you're on, you probably will answer faster than I do. Um, this one is about 18 by uh, 12 inches. And I think the smaller one is maybe like 9 by 11 and it is a peach color and it's good for use on your serger too. Um, you can actually form it around to make your serger easier, things to glide on it easier. I leave mine on all the time. I've pushed this off several times, but I'm pushing off one more time because you can see this nice big space here. My feed teeth work so I can bring my feed teeth up and I can be piecing and everything just glides. So I leave mine on all the time. Every now and then I polish it. I just leave it right on my table, polish my mat and my table with table polish. I'm looking to see if I've got some right here that I can show you. And yes, I do. This is table polish. It's called table and insert polish. Comes in a little blue tube just like this. It takes about the size of a quarter and you're going to rub it all on there. It comes with a little cloth. Mine is misplaced right now, but um, I polish it at least once a week. But then remember, I do a lot of quilting. You may not need to polish it. And the answer is you'll know when because when this quits gliding across there, you just need some polish. I'm putting up the link for the um Janome class kit if they are interested. Okay, she's putting up the link for the Janome class kit. If you're interested in that, it has the zipper, and I'm a wild and wacky person most of the time, so my fabrics are fun and funky. And we also have some that you can see all, I think there's six different options, and you can see all of them on the website. You can see how bright and fun this is on the back and how it is on the front also. Gisela would like to know, is there going to be a repeat for Saturday of the class? I believe it will be left up so you can go back and watch it later, but you do need to get signed in to that page. So even if you're going to watch it later, go ahead and get signed in now so you can get back on there. You guys are becoming my best friends. I feel like I'm just in a circle of friends and most of us have never seen each other. Um, so make sure if and when, well, I don't, I don't want to say it like that. When we get back to going to shows and events and when I come into a store close to you, make sure you introduce yourself because obviously I'm used to looking at your names on here and uh, be nice to put a face with the names. What site is it that they can register for that Saturday class? Um... Stacy will probably put that up, but it is, you would go to the Janome Sewing, and then there should be a link off of there to get registered for the class. If not, I'll put a link on here when we get finished. I'll put a link up. I 
I appreciate all of you coming today and seeing a little bit more about the weightless quilter. Um, I know we didn't do any sewing, but trust me, if this wasn't already quilted, I would be working on it because I can just pull this towards me and I can get this in here where I need to work with it. And it's just, it's just so easy to use. I, I don't know how much more I can say, but I hope you'll trust me in the fact that even though you didn't see me sew on it, that you'll find it very easy to use. And I've had mine probably close to three years. And so I haven't found anything better. I don't want something hooked up to my ceiling that looks like I'm ready to take an engine out of a semi. And um, this is just really a great solution to having something that allows you to move and take the weight off. When I describe it and I don't have it with me, I usually tell people it's like having three of your best sewing friends over and they're gonna hold the weight on the, on the quilt at all three corners of it. So one last question. When are you coming to the UK? When am I coming to the UK? Hey, Stacy, let's work something out. <laughs> that would be a fun trip. I would love that. So if we don't have any other questions, I'm gonna say bye for now and I'll see some of you on Saturday and maybe I should say hopefully I'll see a lot of you on Saturday. And um, have a great day, a great evening, wherever you're at. It depends, obviously. Some of you are ready for the day and some of us are just getting ready for dinner. So bye for now. Thanks for joining us.